Thank you, Ian. I heard Ian play that last May during a worship service, and it thrilled my heart to hear those beautiful Advent hymns. I'm proud of Ian and so many young adults who work at the General Conference headquarters. Thank you, Maggie, for your playing this morning on the organ. Thank you for all those who are participating through Hope Channel, young people. Last night we had some wonderful sharing by Heidi Santiago, another young adult working in New York City, reaching the hearts of people. Pastor Sean Brace was with us last night. Thank you, Sean, for your testimony. This morning, fairly early, Nancy received a text message with an interesting attachment. It was very simple but very profound. Came from a young lady whom you'll see more of, helping to lead our prayer team here during the annual council, Melody Mason. And she and a number of her friends were walking through this building singing, Jesus is coming again. While you and I were getting ready to come here, they were praying and singing and they showed the video just outside my office door. I want to tell you, there's something about the effervescence and love of young people. And I thank God for them. We want to welcome all of you to the General Conference and to this annual council. You've been welcomed many times, but we want you to feel very much at home. This is your home. This is a family. In fact, as I saw the hands go up after you were asked how many of you live outside of this country or work outside this country or are from another country, it was about seven-eighths of this audience, we truly are a world family in Jesus. And I want to personally thank so many of you for the incredible hospitality that you have provided to Nancy and to me as we have traveled this globe. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We truly are a family. I also want to acknowledge the presence of some of our former leaders. Pastor Jan Paulson is with us, Pastor Matthew Bediaco, and others two division presidents who are not with us. Pastor Paul Ratsara is at home preparing for the funeral tomorrow for his wife. Let us continue to keep the Ratsara family in our prayers. Also, Israel Leto, president of the Inter-American Division, is not with us because he is standing by the side of his son, whom we are grateful is showing some signs of improvement. But I want to welcome all of you as we look at God's word this morning. And I have a rather heavy message from the books of Revelation and its very small introductory book or at least it's just before it, one chapter, Jude. You know, our theme is revival and prophetic truth for this particular annual council. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 to 4, and we read, after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, 
a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. God has called the Seventh-day Adventist Church to a unique mission to communicate to the world the great message of salvation in the context of Revelation 14. Our emphasis to some extent at the annual council this year is on communication. Communicating this incredible message. He wants people, Jesus wants us, to know that he, Christ, our Savior and our righteousness is ministering for us as a high priest in the most holy place of a real heavenly sanctuary and that he is coming soon. We're called to prepare the world for the final judgment that is coming in the very near future. He wants us to share the marvelous news of his righteousness and that religious organizations have turned from true biblical worship and have fallen from God's plan. He wants us to turn people back to him and to the true worship of God, which involves following what he has said. He asks us to participate in calling people out of Babylon into God's full truth, honoring and accepting his authority as creator and accepting his Sabbath, a seal that is a testimony to the world that we love and honor him. All of this is the unique message given to Seventh-day Adventists, a unique message that encompasses the three angels' messages of Revelation 14 and the fourth angel of Revelation 18. Now, the great controversy, page 452, explains it in a very powerful way. When the Sabbath was changed by the papal power, the seal was taken from the law. The disciples of Jesus are called upon to restore it by exalting the Sabbath of the fourth commandment to its rightful position as the Creator's memorial and the sign of His authority. The three angels are joined by this fourth angel about which we just read to reinforce the urgency of turning towards the true worship of God. Never before has this description of God's mission for his end time church and the condition of the world been more unmistakably applicable than today. We're living in the end of time. The messages in Revelation 14 and 18 are set in the development of Revelation 13, which describes the beast and then another beast, which gives power to develop the image to the beast. In the last few months, we have seen that the prophecy of Revelation 13 is as real and alive as when our pioneers preached that message. If ever there was a time and need to be urgently about our work, it is now. Through the power of the fourth angel, we are to communicate God's truth in love, illuminating the earth with God's glory. Last week, we participated in the dynamic International Urban Mission Conference, 
designed to have divisions, unions, local fields, and churches put into action biblical and spirit of prophecy plans for mission to the cities in the largest urban centers of this globe. And you will be hearing much more about that in just a few days during annual council. How exciting to hear about the comprehensive urban evangelism that is taking place, has taken place, or will take place in Sydney, New York, Lagos, Tokyo, Mumbai, London, Kinshasa, Cairo, Kiev, Buenos Aires, Manila, Luanda, Geneva, Mexico City, and many other large metropolitan areas. This all takes place under the overall overarching strategic plan of tell the world. Revival and Reformation is the foundation of our strategic plan and will continue until Jesus comes. It is our greatest personal and corporate need. Revival and Reformation open our eyes to God's command for mission to the cities using every method of Jesus, including comprehensive health ministry, which is a vital part of the end time final cry. It is all integrated and connected. Don't in any way mistake many of the programs and areas of emphasis to be disjointed. This is all interrelated. We're to carry out God's mandate to his church, communicating truth in love to illuminate the earth with God's glory. A few months ago, I received an encouraging email from one of our treasurers, Norbert Zenz, in the EUD, the Inter-European Division. And it had some information about certain church business. But Norbert took the time to include in the email what he had read that morning in the Review and Herald of June 4, 1889. You know, I like a treasurer who just doesn't look at the balance sheet. He looks at the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And this is what he sent to me. There is a great work to be done for our time, and we do not half realize what the Lord is willing to do for his people. What an encouraging quote to receive. Let's wake up to how God wants to communicate his truth and love through us in illuminating the earth with his glory. But what are we actually communicating and how are we communicating? As Seventh-day Adventists, we are called to be part of the message of that fourth angel of Revelation 18, an angel that comes down with great power to proclaim the truth. We're to communicate in every possible way, through print, through digital and electronic methods, through media, including television and radio and internet and social media, through personal witness and outreach, and through public evangelism. Now, the publishing work is doing a powerful activity and work. We're told in Publishing Ministry, pages or page 388, in a large degree through our publishing houses is to be accomplished the work of that other angel who comes down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. Even though the publishing industry today is very unsettled because of the internet and changes in reading patterns, the publishing work is to be one of the greatest methods to the end of time in communicating God's truth in love to illuminate the earth with God's glory. We praise God for how he has used the entire world church to distribute. And since we made this particular slide, since it was made just a few days ago, the number has increased not just 120 million copies in printed form, but 140 million. And 26 million internet downloads of various versions of the great controversy during the years 2012 and 2013. 
During this annual council, we will be praising God for his blessing in this great seed sowing activity. Thank you to each of you, to your organizations, for participating with heaven to illuminate the earth with God's glory. This massive evangelistic outreach will bear fruit and already has with new members joining God's remnant church. God will help us to more strongly illuminate the earth with God's glory through the printed and electronic page. The communication department is daily involved in many media activities, including the internet, to communicate God's truth in love and to illuminate the earth with God's glory. It is part of that fourth angel of Revelation 18, providing incredible opportunities to touch lives all throughout this globe. Next week, during annual council, we will debut the creation. The earth is a witness. A general conference communication department project coordinated by the communication department and our faith and science council and geoscience research institute. Local churches and the church's media will use this new creation video in outreach events to the community. At the end of the creation video shown in a local church, a local church will introduce people to many more follow-up programs leading to more direct evangelistic activities and meetings. These programs will draw people closer to Jesus and to his truth and illuminate the earth with God's glory. The Sabbath School Personal Ministries Department is engaged in multiple methods of helping church members interact and share the Advent message through every form possible, including the highly successful small group approaches, illuminating the earth with God's glory. The Health Ministries Department is helping every church to become a community health center, and all church members, not just health professionals, not just professionals within the church in terms of paid employees, but every member to be part of comprehensive health ministry. All with the objective of illuminating the earth with God's glory. You'll hear much more about comprehensive health ministry in the next few days. The Ministerial Association is helping us to focus on revival and reformation, mission to the cities, and so many other areas illuminating the earth with God's glory. Women's ministries, children's ministries, youth ministries, Adventist chaplaincy ministries, the education department, public affairs and religious liberty department, stewardship ministries, and planned giving and trust services are all participating in integrated evangelism. I recently had the opportunity to speak and consult with every one of our departments. I want to tell you, I am proud of our general conference departments as they engage church members in active witnessing for the Lord to communicate God's truth in love, illuminating the earth with God's glory. Our services and agencies, such as the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Adventist Health International, Adventist Heritage Ministry, Adventist Mission, Adventist Review and Adventist World, Adventist Risk Management, Adventist World Radio, Auditing Service, Biblical Research Institute, Christian Record Services for the Blind, Geoscience Research Institute, Hope Channel, Institute of World Mission, International Health and Temperance Association, International Religious Liberty Association, Office of Archives, Statistics and Research, and others are active with one purpose alone, that of communicating God's truth in love, thus illuminating the earth with God's glory. Our general conference institutions, including the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, Adventist University of Africa, Andrews University, Loma Linda University, Oakwood University, 
Pacific Press, and Review and Herald, all are to be focused on training and working to communicate God's truth in love, illuminating the earth with God's glory. Presidential, Secretariat, Treasury, have but one reason to exist. And that is to coordinate the communication of God's truth and love and illuminate the earth with God's glory. Amen. Divisions, unions, local conferences, missions, fields, institutions, organizations, local churches, every member, we are all to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us to illuminate the earth with God's glory. Let us rejoice that we all have the same goal and are unified in this objective wherever we may be. Mike Ryan, responsible for strategic planning and the coordinator of our recent wonderful International Urban Mission Conference, recently told me about how God's leading, how God is leading in Juba, South Sudan, where every member of the church has a job in mission. They had eight congregations in Juba and were in the midst of planting 12 more congregations. There was unusual excitement among the members. They all knew about the goal of 12 new churches and had made commitments to have a part in reaching that goal. Assignments were given and they were moving like a well-trained unit. God rewarded this evangelistic commitment and praise God, the 12 new church plants now exist. And they are supported by a church-run FM radio station, the only FM station in the city of Juba. Let's be proactive in planning programs and activities where every member can use their spiritual gifts in communicating God's truth in love. However, let's review what it is that we are communicating. Whether in the rural areas of this globe or whether in mission to the cities or in any activity of the church or its organizations, we've been promoting and earnestly seeking revival and reformation through the power of the Holy Spirit. We just finished a powerful set of lessons last quarter in the Adult Bible Study Guide series by Mark Finley. What a blessing to study God's word and realize we are totally dependent upon Christ's justifying and sanctifying power in our lives. Last night we had a wonderful emphasis on righteousness by faith. Each of you were given a copy of Steps to Christ. I want to tell you this powerful book with 13 chapters is so incredibly insightful in how we can relate to Jesus. I don't understand how anyone reading this could not find true meaning in Christ. Take it off the shelf. Read it. Especially focus on chapters 7 and 8. It will explain to you in marvelous simplicity the relationship we have with Jesus, his justifying power, his sanctifying power, all through his righteousness. What a blessing to have our Sabbath school, these Sabbath school lessons. In some parts of the world, Sabbath school is growing, and in other parts, it needs an enthusiastic reset. My fellow leaders, let's make Sabbath school one of the most successful evangelistic outreach activities in the Seventh-day Adventist church. If it is not vibrant in your part of the world, rejuvenate it and make it the nurturing evangelistic tool it was meant to be by focusing upon Bible study and outreach and mission. But back to revival and reformation. Are we really succeeding in allowing God to, to revive us and reform us and change us so we truly can illuminate the earth with God's glory? This is our destiny. And it is linked to humbling ourselves before God 
and realizing our complete and total dependence upon Jesus Christ. The Great Controversy, page 464, says the following. Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be among the people of the Lord, that's you and that's me, such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. The spirit and power of God will be poured out upon his children. At that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has supplanted love for God and his word. As part of God's remnant church, are we spending time with Jesus every day to allow his character to become ours as we become more and more like him through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? Are we truly dependent on the Lord and read his scriptures daily to be revived by his word? I'm following that precious program, a chapter every day. It's a wonderful experience. The Great Controversy, page 478, tells us, it is only as the law of God is restored to its rightful position that there can be a revival of primitive faith and godliness among his professed people. Are we involved in earnest prayer, pleading for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit at 7 in the morning or at 7 at night or I don't care what time, just plead for the Holy Spirit? Are we standing for pure biblical truth and God's law in the face of public intimidation and political correctness? Are we trusting in the sure word of prophecy, understanding that Daniel and Revelation, those incredible prophetic messages in this word, must be proclaimed with clarity at this hour of God's judgment? Are we standing for the historicist understanding of prophetic interpretation? and refuting preterism and futurism? Are we firm in our resolve to use only the historical, biblical method of interpreting Scripture and resisting any inroads in our churches and educational institutions toward a higher critical approach? You see... The Great Controversy, page 465, shares this counsel. In the truths of his word, God has given to men a revelation of himself. And to all who accept them, they are a shield against the deceptions of Satan. It is a neglect of these truths that has opened the door to the evils which are now becoming so widespread in the religious world a wrong conception of the character, the perpetuity, and the obligation of the divine law has led to errors in relation to conversion and sanctification and has resulted in lowering the standard of piety in the church. Here is to be found the secret of the lack of the spirit and power of God in the revival's of our time. Are we refusing to be misled by mystical practices and beliefs that are pervading Christianity at the present time? Are we resisting the ever-present urge to make our organizations and our institutions bigger and better by conforming to worldly standards of greatness rather than the simple, humble approach God has asked us to follow? Are we allowing the pressures of society and political correctness to push us in directions in opposition to biblical principles? Are we enamored by personal wealth and ease of life rather than personal sacrifice and humility? Are we trivializing life by wasting time in self-centered, egotistical activities. I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. 
The Great Controversy, page 470, reads the following. Those who experience the sanctification of the Bible will manifest a spirit of humility. Like Moses, they have had a view of the awful majesty of holiness and they see their own unworthiness in contrast with the purity and exalted perfection of the infinite one. Are we communicating to the world a different message than we intend by how we personally use the internet, by what we watch on television, by what we wear, by how we use our time, by what kind of music we listen to, or by our worship style. Selected Messages, book two, page 36, explains certain things that took place in the past and would take place at the end of time. And we read the following. The things you have described as taking place in Indiana, a state in this country, the Lord has shown me. Now, this isn't just some thinking and revelations from just somebody's imagination. It says, the Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. There will be shouting with drums, music, and dancing. The senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit never reveals itself in such methods, in such a bedlam of noise. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods for making of none effect the pure, sincere, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. Now, recognizing that the world is full of various cultures represented by all of you here today, let's understand that, but let's worship in simplicity and in truth, using the word of God and aligning ourselves with the culture of heaven. We've been called to proclaim the three angels' messages and participate with the fourth angel to illuminate the earth with God's truth in love and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at several passages in the small epistle of Jude to discover how to truly communicate in love the three angels' messages and the message of the fourth angel. Verses 3 and 4 in the little book of Jude, one chapter. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you exhorting you to contend, contend earnestly, struggle, fight, work at it, do something proactive, contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. Ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, God through Jude admonishes us to be serious about our faith and what we believe earnestly defending our faith as we communicate God's truth in love and illuminate the earth with God's glory. Let's stand for the great biblical truths that have made the Seventh-day Adventist message what it is. Do not bend with any wind of doctrine that flows through the church which is not founded on those great biblical injun injunctions. It is is written, and also thus saith the Lord. <clears throat> now,
There are those in the church and outside the church who wish to change the very beliefs that we have held sacred and change the character of the Seventh-day Adventist church itself. People who want to turn the grace of God into something vile, thus denying Jesus himself, even though they pretend to lift up his name. My brothers and sisters, recognize the 28 fundamental beliefs and truths of this church to be Christ-centered beliefs, completely biblically based. Guard and preserve the precious Advent message with your life. It will provide you with life now and through eternity because it is the word of God. It is the word of the Lord who was made flesh. This is Jesus' Advent message. As we communicate truth to those who do not know Christ, we must guard against the world entering into the church to neutralize our mission. Testimonies to Ministers, page 265. The world must not be introduced into the church and married to the church, forming a bond of unity. Through this means, the church will become indeed corrupt and as stated in Revelation, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Through association with the world, our institutions will become unsubstantial, unreliable, because these worldly elements introduced and placed in positions of trust are looked up to as teachers to be respected in their educating, directing, and official position, and they are sure to be worked upon by the spirit and power of darkness. What a responsibility for the leaders in our educational institutions and other institutions to keep the pure truth of God's message not only in their own minds but before faculty, students, and staff. Let's make sure that this unfortunate development which could happen does not happen in our lives, in our churches, in our organizations, or in our institutions. Verses 5 to 8 in Jude tell us the following. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe, and the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of that great day, of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities around them in a similar manner to these having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. You see, God wants us to honor him and accept his loving mercies toward us. The Israelites who turned on the Lord were destroyed, and the angels who rejected their master will be destroyed, as will those who practice immorality as Sodom and Gomorrah did. The acquiescence to homosexuality that is pervading so many societies today is nothing more than the old immorality of Sodom and Gomorrah that is completely in opposition to God's holy word. And according to the Bible, will result in not receiving eternal life for those who reject God's loving and saving efforts to turn them away from sinful behavior. The Lord also speaks strongly against those who ignore and resist heaven-directed authority. God's warnings are for all of us, regardless of what type of sin. Since we are all sinners and in need of a Savior, Whatever our sins are, if we come to Christ and humbly fall at the foot of the cross, 
in repentance, he will forgive us. He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and give us victory over sin through his power. It is of the utmost importance that we stay close to God and be grounded in his truth. Otherwise, we will fail to communicate truth in love and illuminate the earth with God's glory. As we approach the end of time, we are told in Testimonies to Ministers, pages 270 to 271, that there are only two classes in our world. Those who are obedient to Jesus Christ, who seek the Master to do his will and work for the attainment of the salvation of their own souls and the souls of everyone who is associated with them, who names the name of Christ. That's the first. And the second class, the children of disobedience. Let's obey God's instructions for us as his people as we communicate God's truth in love and illuminate the earth with God's glory. Verse 12 indicates that there, are a, that there are misguided people who are spots in your love feasts while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. Jude likens them to clouds without water, trees without fruit, raging waves, wandering stars. He says in verse 16 that these are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. Verses 18 and 19 show there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. As we communicate God's truth in love and illuminate the earth with God's glory, the devil will try to bring in dividing questions and preoccupations through grumblers and complainers who will call, cause divisions. Testimonies to Ministers, page 270, laments how pitiable and sad to see men who have known something of the Spirit of God fall so completely into the arms of the world as to be swayed and influenced by its voice and to depend upon its favors for strength and success. How manifestly such are alienated from Christ, how full of self-confidence, how full of vaunting, of vanity, and how short-sighted in regard to spirituality. I want to tell you, I take this personally and to my heart. I hope you do as well. Jude gives us the key to being able to communicate God's truth and love and illuminate the earth with his glory. Verses 20 to 21, read as our scripture today, urging us, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. As we communicate God's truth in love and illuminate the earth with God's glory, preparing others and ourselves for Christ's soon coming, let us not allow anyone at any time to turn us from the time-honored, rock-solid biblical truths which we as Seventh-day Adventists have believed. If you have accepted this precious Advent message, that thrills our hearts and have stood by the truth in the past. Do not be tempted to change in the least unless you read a thus saith the Lord. Don't do it, South American division, inter-American division, North American division, trans-European division inter-European division, Euro-Asia division, Middle East and North Africa union, Israel field, West Central Africa division, East Central Africa division, Southern Africa Indian Ocean division, 
Southern Asia Division, Northern Asia Pacific Division, Southern Asia Pacific Division, and South Pacific Division. Communicate God's truth in love and illuminate the earth with God's glory as we approach Christ's soon second coming. Testimonies to Ministers, page 300. Let me tell you that the Lord will work in this last work, that's the loud cry, in a manner very much out of the common order of things. You know, we're spending a lot of time planning, and we should. Mission to the cities. I'm so excited about the document that's coming to you in just a number of hours. But I want to tell you, all the planning, all of the activity can in no way compare with what God is going to do. Now, continuing on with this quote. In a manner very much out of the common order of things and in a way that will be contrary to any human planning. God will use ways and means by which it will be seen that he is taking the reins, you know, when you're driving a wagon with a horse, he is taking the reins in his own hands. The workers will be surprised by the simple means that he will use to bring about and perfect his work of righteousness. You see, Jude beautifully concludes his epistle by bringing glory to God. Verses 24 and 25, magnificent verses Share that crescendo of glory declaring who it is that we are to lean on and cherish as the one who saves us, justifies us, sanctifies us, nurtures us, and helps us to communicate his truth in love as we illuminate the earth with his glory. He will help us to succeed. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling or falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. What a glorious way to which, in which to illuminate the earth with God's glory. On a recent trip to Tahiti, I received a precious note from an eight-year-old named Menehere. Menehere is illuminating the earth with God's glory. I got this little note. It's in French, but I'll tell it to you in English. Menehere said, I'm very happy to see you and to tell you that I love you and wish you a good trip. I ask you to please pray for my family and particularly for my brother who left the church and for my father who is not an Adventist. I am eight years old and I believe in God with my mama. I thank you and I think about you in my prayers. What faith and commitment on the part of eight-year-old Menehere. Where is our faith and our commitment? Is it committed to communicating God's love and his truth and illuminate the earth with his glory? Is it strong in the Lord or is it being neutralized by the devil? As we come to the end of time, Realizing the devil is making every effort to confuse our message and our mission, let us rest firmly upon God's word and his promises. His promises to make us truly his messengers. Acts of the Apostles, page 600. Christ has given to the church a sacred charge. Every member should be a channel through which God can communicate to the world the treasures of his grace. The unsearchable riches of Christ. There is nothing that the Savior desires so much. Don't miss this point. There is nothing 
that the Savior desires so much as agents, that's you and me, who will represent to the world his spirit and his character. There is nothing that the world needs so much as the manifestation through humanity, that's you and that's me, of the Savior's love. All heaven is waiting for men and women through whom God can reveal the power of Christianity. Are you that man? Are you that woman today? Am I? Are you willing to allow God to communicate his truth and his love through you, thus illuminating the earth with his glory? as you lift up Christ, his righteousness, his sanctuary service, his Sabbath, his three angels' messages, his message through the fourth angel, and lifting up and promoting and proclaiming his soon return. Will you accept that sacred charge and open your life to complete control by the Lord in accomplishing his message and his mission as we approach the end of time. All heaven is waiting. If you're willing to recommit yourself to this incredible task of communicating God's truth in love, and illuminate the earth with God's glory through his power, would you stand to your feet right now? As we stand before the Lord, we are standing in humility before the one who is able to keep you from falling and stumbling. The one who alone is wise and the one to whom we give glory and honor and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we've done in the past, I'm going to ask you to remain standing. We'll be singing our closing hymn, powerful song, seven, three, Three seven seven three, seeking the lost. I hope you'll sing it with all the enthusiasm you can. But before we do that, I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I want you to pray an earnest prayer of commitment. We're facing unusual days ahead. The proclamation of the three angels' message messages and that fourth angel that comes down to illuminate the earth with God's glory. Are you willing to be part of it? You've indicated you are. Now please commit yourself in that great cause in a quiet, short prayer with the person standing next to you and then remain standing quietly. And I'll close with a prayer before we sing. Please pray together.
Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Let's sing that powerful hymn as we go from this place to seek the lost. <laughs>